Life. It is what makes Earth so unique among the other planets. Life is very diverse and fascinating, and we humans have always wondered, when and how did life appear? First off, what even is life? In simple terms, life is anything that could do functions on its own, such as eating, sleeping, reproducing, etc. Take a rock, for example. It can't eat, sleep, or really do anything on its own, as opposed to, say, a cat, of which could do those set functions. Life in the modern world is divided into various groups known as kingdoms, the major ones, of course, being plants, animals, fungi, and various kingdoms of single-celled organisms. Each one of these kingdoms consists of thousands, even millions of unique and fascinating organisms, okay, of which have been evolving for millions and billions of years. But when did all of us start? The origins for life on Earth have been a big mystery for many years and scientists have been making theories on how life arose in our planet. Let's first ask the question, when did life appear? There have been a decent amount of estimates spanning from about 3.5 billion years ago during the early Paleoarchaean to as far back as the Hedy and Aeon 4 billion years ago. We don't have an exact answer, but for simplicity's sakes, I'll go with the uncontroversial answer of 3.5 billion years ago. Now it's time for the more difficult question, how? There have been many theories on how life came to be, but for this video I'll only discuss two. The first and more straightforward one is called abiogenesis. So basically the theory states that life originated from abiotic matter. Okay, so you may be asking, but how can something non-living turn into a living thing? Well, according to abiogenesis, the transition from abiotic matter to biotic matter took a long time in an evolutionary process of increasing complexity. So first off, of course, you need a planet of which is habitable. By the Eorchean era, Earth has formed a solid crust and has liquid water, which is essential for life. So we can safely say that Earth is habitable now. Next up, with the power of prebiotic synthesis, we have a bunch of very simple organic compounds of which assemble into polymers like proteins and ribonucleic acid. <laughs> ribonucleic acid, or RNA for short, is similar to DNA. However, RNA is just one strand as opposed to two strands. Then we get to protocells. A protocell is a spherical collection of lipids, which are biomolecules, that has been proposed as a stepping stone for the origin of life. It's said that they reproduce RNA and extinct genetic information before anything like DNA was a thing. In other words, protocells were life before life. There's more confusing and complicated stuff such as Luca and all that, but I won't get to all that stuff. There's a decent amount of sources that explains it in more detail than I could ever do. So that was the abiogenesis theory. Despite all the information, the theory hasn't exactly been proven or disproven yet. So for now, that's just the theory I'll go for to explain the origin of life. Of course, like many things, there's other theories out there. And there's one in particular that may shock you. The panspermia theory. This theory says that life didn't originate from Earth, but from space. This concept has been around for ages, being first proposed in the 5th century BC by a Greek philosopher by the name of Anaxagoras. According to this theory, well, hypothesis really, life originated from space and being distributed by comets, asteroids, etc. They spread across the universe on many planets, including ours. Of course, the theory is quite absurd, and it hasn't quite been proven yet. Most scientists don't support this theory, and has been criticized for not being able to be tested and not explaining about the origins of life itself. Even then, it's still a pretty interesting hypothesis. I mean, can you imagine us all secretly being aliens the whole time? I surely can't. So, that's it for today. Honestly, not my, one of my favorite uploads, but it's still highly important in the history of life on Earth. Next time, I'll discuss the Paleo-Mesoarchean eras. Anyway, bye.